What's cool, Pokemon here? Today's video, I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about eBay's Standard Envelope, ESE for short. As an eBay buyer, I'm purchasing a lot of individual cards that are shipped through ESE, and over the years, I've noticed that there's really no uniform approach that sellers take to package and mail all of these ESE orders. In my opinion, there are a lot of eBay sellers who are wasting a lot of time and a lot of money shipping all of these ESE orders. So that's what I wanted to do in today's video is actually show you guys exactly how I go about packaging and mailing all of my ESE orders, starting off with the biggest takeaway from this video. And that is, if you are an eBay seller utilizing ESE, do not use a thermal printer. Do not print your ESE label with a thermal printer and affix that label onto a PWE. Instead, print your ESE label directly onto the PWE. And that's something that I've talked about previously. However, I've never actually shown you guys the process into how I go about printing my ESE labels directly onto PWEs. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and do now. So we're actually going to switch over to my computer view and I'll show you guys just how easy it is to print your ESE labels directly onto PWEs. And then after that, we'll go back and I'll show you guys exactly how I go about packaging all of my ESE orders. So whether you're printing your ESE labels in bulk or you're printing them individually, you're somehow going to end up at this screen right here where you can actually see the labels and then print them out. So basically you're going to want to go to your print screen, which is going to look something like this. And from here, this is where you're going to want to change the actual paper size to print directly onto the PWE. So for example, my default paper size is always set to just eight and a half by 11, your standard sheet of paper, because because this is an inkjet printer. However, I just click on this paper size option and within these options right here, I do already have one that's called envelope number 10. That's the envelopes that I use. For me, this was already a kind of pre-built option that I had within my computer. However, if you don't have one of these options, you can add it by going, there should be some option that says manage custom sizes or add size or something along those lines where you can actually enter the dimensions and then save it as whatever you want to save it as, and it'll it'll save as one of these kind of default options. So that way you don't have to do that every single time, and you can just click on it from there. But if you do already have that option, you just click on that option, the preview will change to what it's going to look like, and then all you do is you click on print. And from there, it's just going to print out directly onto the PWE. So you do not have to waste time and money printing your ESE labels with a thermal printer and affixing them onto the actual PWEs. So I'm gonna go ahead and click print and actually show you guys what it looks like after it comes out of the printer. So here it is, uh, ESE is printing out of the inkjet printer. For those of you who are wondering, I use an Epson EcoTank ET3830. Really like it for printing these labels. All it is, is it's just, instead of putting regular paper into the uh, cartridge right here, you're just putting your PWE envelopes in there. So it's that easy. I really don't understand why sellers are still printing ESE orders with a thermal printer and then affixing that label onto the PWE when you can print them and it's a lot cheaper and it's a lot quicker doing that method. So now let's go ahead and take a look at how I actually package all of my ESE orders. Now, when it comes time to actually packaging ESE orders, I pretty much use the same method of packaging for every single ESE order, depending upon how many cards are within that order. Starting off with a few card supplies that I use. Personally, I like to use the Ultra Pro brand of card supplies, but you can use whatever brand you prefer or whatever brand you can buy for the cheapest price point possible. So we have the Ultra Pro penny sleeves right here. We also have the Ultra Pro 3x4 regular top loader right there. And then finally, we have the Ultra Pro team bags. Now, the trick with purchasing card supplies is you're always going to want to purchase these off of eBay or Amazon, wherever you can find the cheapest price point possible. And then you're also going to want to purchase card supplies in bulk that you can justifiably purchase. So for example, with the top loaders, instead of purchasing individual packs of top loaders, I purchase these by the case. So that way I'm able to get the cheapest price point possible. Obviously, not everyone can justify purchasing a case of top loaders because maybe you're not shipping as many single cards as I am. But in that case, purchase multiple packs of top loaders. I know there's many eBay sellers who offer multi-quantity discounts, but definitely recommend
recommend purchasing multiple packs of top loaders at the at the least so that way you can get the price points as low as possible that is the trick with shipping low end single cards is you're, you need to get your price points as low as possible for all of your packaging supplies now when it comes time to actually packaging these ese orders depending upon how many cards someone purchases if it's one or two cards basically i have all of the cards within my ebay inventory already within penny sleeves so i'll pull those two cards from my ebay inventory and i can put one or two cards inside of one of the ultra pro top loaders so i'll put both cards inside of the top loader just like that i'll take the top loader put it inside of a team bag just like that and then i do also include a business card within every single ebay order that i'm shipping out so i'll put my business card in just like that and then i just go ahead and seal the uh, team bag just like that now I like to use team bags instead of packaging tape, and I would strongly recommend using team bags over tape for three reasons. One, tape just doesn't look as good. Team bags look a lot more professional. Two, when the buyer receives your package, uh, it's a lot easier to open than if there was a piece of tape going across the top of the top loader. And then three, when the card's being mailed, it's going to move around inside of the top loader. And the card could reach the top of the top loader and get stuck to the piece of tape and actually damage the card. So I would strongly advise against using any type of tape within the inside of any of your packages. Really just use tape for the outside of your packages. So that's what I do for one or two cards using the ese method when you get to more than two cards you can't fit more than two cards inside of one single top loader uh, if they're in penny sleeves so when you get to more than two cards depending upon however many cards uh, the order is so in this case we'll use 10 cards right here I do this for 3 to 12 cards. Once you get over 12 cards, order total is right around that $20 mark. And once you hit that $20 mark, that's when I start to use first class mail. Now, I know eBay recently changed their ESE guidelines to where that you can have an order of $50 or less shipping through ESE. Personally, I think that's a really, really high value. I wouldn't want to be shipping a $50 order ESE. So that's why I do the $20 $20 value cap right there. So once I get over 12 cards, it's kind of reaching that $20 value cap. Plus it's starting to get a little bit thicker than I would uh, feel comfortable mailing ESE. So I cap it at $20 value or 13 plus cards. So in this case, we'll use 10 cards right here. So I grab all 10 cards. All 10 cards are within penny sleeves. I put all 10 cards into the team bag, just like that. I put the one single top loader behind all 10 cards just like that and then I also take my business card put it in front of all 10 cards just like that and I seal the team bag shut just like that with this method I've had a few people reach out to me asking why I don't use either thicker top loaders that can fit all the cards or semi-rigids or there's these cardboard kind of top loaders called shipping shields why I don't use that instead of this method right here and the answer to that is pretty simple for one I don't want to have to be purchasing more card supplies than I actually need so I want to have the bare essentials on hand I don't want to have to have tons of different card supplies for every type of order the fewer card supplies that I have the bigger quantity I can purchase of those card supplies and the cheaper price points I can get. Plus, uh, the second reason is because I've shipped thousands and thousands and thousands of ESE orders using this exact method, and I have I can probably count on one hand the number of times where I've had someone reach out and say a card got damaged in transit. And in those very rare cases, the card is absolutely mangled, meaning that even if I used a thicker top loader or a semi-rigid or one of those cardboard shipping shields, I think the card probably would have still got damaged in transit. It's to the point where I don't think, no matter how you packaged it, I don't think it would have uh, prevented that type of damage. The amount of damage is very, very rare. So for me, this is a perfectly reasonable method of shipping ESE orders. One more thing I wanted to talk about before I end this video right here is another use of the eBay standard envelope service, and that is with these cards right here. So modern jumbo cards, specifically modern jumbo cards. How do you package and mail these cards? for a cost-effective method that you're not going to be losing money. Now, you could ship this card via first-class mail. That's going to cost you right around $4, which in this case, I'm selling this card right here for $1.99 on eBay. So if I ship this card first-class mail, I would be losing a ton of money on that individual sale. 
However, you can ship this card via ESE as well. And for that, I use these right here. So these are the six by eight cardboard envelopes that you can purchase directly through the uh, eBay shipping supply store. And basically all it is, is it's a cardboard envelope. There's no type of padding on the inside. And these envelopes actually fit modern jumbo cards perfectly. So what I do is I just simply put the jumbo card into the envelope. I'll put up to five jumbo cards per envelope. Once you have more than five cards, I think it becomes a little bit too thick. And all I do is I seal the envelope shut just like that. I don't use any other type of padding or packaging material or anything like that. And I've shipped hundreds and hundreds of these jumbo cards, this exact method. And I've actually never ran into an issue where a card got damaged in transit. When I first started using this method, I wasn't quite sure how it, work, how it would work out. I thought I might have some cards getting damaged in transit. But like I said, I've sent hundreds and hundreds of cards using this method. And I've never ran into an issue where a card got damaged in transit. So again, for me, this is a perfectly reasonable way to ship cheap modern jumbo cards. So seal the envelope shut just like that. And then the thing that I discouraged in the beginning of this video about printing your ESE uh, labels on with a thermal printer and then affixing it to the PWE is actually the method that I use for these cases right here, just because you can't send these through an inkjet printer. So in this case, I do use the thermal printer to print out the eBay standard envelope label, and then I'll just put it down right across the top of the envelope just like that. Now, in terms of the actual one, two, or three ounce shipping option for this type of package right here, I always select the three ounce. So whether it's be one jumbo card or five jumbo cards, I'm always selecting that three ounce option. And I've never ran into an issue where the package got sent back to me for insufficient postage. So it's definitely a legitimate way to mail mail jumbo cards. I know some post offices have frowned upon this and don't allow it. Uh, that's more so your specific post office. As far as my post office, uh, they do allow this. And like I said, I've never had one kick back to me for insufficient postage. So you could definitely use this. It's just going to depend upon your actual post office. Uh, for me personally, I used to go to one post office who did not allow me to mail these cards via the ESE service at the, uh, the three ounce rate. And so so I just went to a different post office and they said that was fine. And so I've since stopped going to that first post office and have started going to this other post office instead. And like I said, have never ran into an issue. So you definitely can do this. It's just going to depend upon your actual post office. But anyway, that is all I have for today's video. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed and I will see you in the next one.